This video would be shorter than usual, but I thought it will be useful to have it on the channel, as a reference. Raspberry Pi Imager is becoming more and more important every day, and even if you already know how to use the basics, I'm sure you'll learn a few tricks today. So, Raspberry Pi Imager is a free tool, created by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, to install a new system on your device. It's easy to install and use. It's available on most operating systems, so you should be using it, or at least giving it a try. You'll find installation packages on the official website, for Windows, Mac OS and Ubuntu. The Ubuntu package should work on most Debian-based distribution. So, for example, on Windows, download the setup file and install it like any other app. Just double-click on it once downloaded and follow the instructions. But you don't really need a computer to use Raspberry Pi Imager. You can directly use it on your Raspberry Pi, if you already have Raspberry Pi OS installed. In fact, it's now included in the default apps with the latest version. But if you have an older version, you can use APT to quickly get it installed. Just remember that the Raspberry Pi has only one SD card slot. So, if your system is installed on it, you can only flash a new system on a USB drive, or by using an SD to USB adapter. Once installed, the interface is the same on any operating system. There are three buttons. The first one is to choose the distribution you want to install. Unlike other alternatives, Raspberry Pi Imager comes with a list of systems that are directly supported. The list is not exhaustive, but most of the time, you'll find the system you want to install there. For each system, you may have different versions available. Like with or without desktop, 32 or 64 bits, or depending on the Raspberry Pi model you use. You can also use a custom image if you already have it on your computer. Like with Belena Etcher and other tools, it will ask you to choose the file location on your computer. Anyway, let's try with the first image listed in the list. Which is Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, the one currently pushed by the foundation. Once selected, you can click on the second button to choose the media storage, where you'll install the files. SD cards and USB drives are supported. Your system drive should be hidden to avoid any mistake, but if you have some backup drives connected, make sure to make the right selection there. Once done, just click on the third button, right, to start the installation. The tool will download the latest version of the system image if needed, and copy all the files to the storage you chose. I will get back to this in a minute. The process may take a few minutes, depending on the image selection, your internet connection and the storage you use. As explained in a previous video, Etcher tends to be slightly faster, but Imager is not that bad. Once an image downloaded, Raspberry Pi Imager will keep it in cache on your computer, meaning it won't download it every time you flash the same image. For example, Raspberry Pi OS Lite is now cached on my computer, and it can flash it right away if I need another SD card. I don't think there is a feature to remove the cached images, but they are stored in your user directory. For example, on Windows, it's located in the App Data folder. For some systems, like any Raspberry Pi OS image, you'll see an additional button in the app, located in the bottom right corner. You can use it to customize the installation, before the first boot. It will add a few settings on the SD card directly so that you don't have to do it on the Raspberry Pi. It's particularly useful if you flash new SD cards all the time, or want your system to start without doing anything on it, if you don't have any screen or keyboard, for example. In this form, you can change the default hostname for your device. You can enable SSH, to give you access to your Pi from your computer directly on the first boot. Then, you can set a custom username and password, which is now mandatory. If you don't use Pi as the username, it will skip the new first boot wizard, and you'll be directly logged in. In this form, you can also configure your Wi-Fi connection if needed, or change the localization options, like the language and keyboard layout. I don't like the drop-down list in this form, it's often faster to directly type the value. But you'll get used to it. Also, don't forget to change the first parameter, to tell if you want these settings to be set by default for any new installation, or just for this one. You can then flash your SD card as usual, by clicking on the right button. These settings should work on most Debian-based distribution, 
but it's not always the case. At least it works for Raspberry Pi OS for sure. When the distribution is not supported, the button should be hidden. But sometimes, the options will show up, even if it doesn't do anything. For example, I tried with Kali Linux, I filled the form, but it didn't create my username. Just something to have in mind, it's not perfect yet. I don't have completely ditched Belena Etcher, but seeing Raspberry Pi Imager getting better and better with each new update, it will probably happen soon. I still tend to use Etcher when I already have the image on my computer, as it's faster than Imager. But except from that, Imager is almost perfect. There are still a few bugs and some systems could be added to the OS list, Fedora, OpenSUSE, etc., but overall, that's pretty good. I also noticed that the latest version are not necessarily added quickly after a new release. So sometimes, I have to download the image from the official website, even if the system is included in the list. Anyway, if you are not using it yet, I highly recommend giving it a try. And if you don't know which system to try next, you should watch this video where I compare the best ones.